All right, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, different Hyperland projects uh, that are already pre configured and kind of ready to go out of the box for you to use. And I kind of want to just talk about the pros and cons of uh, each one. And you can kind of decide which one is, you know, the best for you if this is the, the route that you're looking for and getting your, your Hyperland uh, set up on your on your desktop. And before I jump into that, um, I'm really trying to make this uh, YouTube thing a full time gig. So if you can please consider uh, liking and subscribing. And if you want to donate, you can hit the thanks button down below or join the membership. So the Heidi project, I have used this one um, quite a bit in the past. This one I used to really, really like. Uh, it was my, my favorite one because it was very minimal. The configuration was light. Uh, but ever since they changed uh, maintainers, I don't know exactly when that was, but it, it's been at least a few months now. The original maintainer stopped doing any progression on it, and someone else picked it up and kind of forked it and you know continued the, the project there. But the, the issue that I, I found is like the, the actual configuration was not as uh, easy there was a lot of um, sourcing and the the configuration was just more simple uh, previously but I, I do feel like it's still a good a good starting point and it and the aesthetics are still really good and all the themes are still there so i mean it has some ups um uh for that it's in itself um the installation process is it's fairly easy i do have a video on how to, how to install this but you just run this command and you want to do this on like a um either a no desktop uh install of a, a distro or a very light um distro and you kind of just run this command and go through all the prompts and, and get get that installed but they have a ton of different uh prepackaged themes that you can choose from which they all look really good and they're really um uh, aesthetically pleasing the the original key bindings on here is, are pretty good as well so you, you can kind of just jump right into it and not really have any you know uh you know big issues with anything um so i think this is definitely a, a really good pick but the other two i think are a little bit better in 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 my opinion so yeah so this one definitely used to be one of my favorites but as far as like a beginner friendly trying to learn hyperlin and try to configure it yourself there's just too many different like sourcing options and different um, changes uh, that you have to understand in order to you know kind of change it to yourself and, and it has a, a few scripts like I had a, another individual trying to you know change the way bar and stuff but every time you change your theme the script runs and, and kind of rewrites what you what you wrote so it goes back to the um, original uh, theming there uh, which makes sense for you know the project in itself to, to do it in that way to, to kind of make it easy and, and, and foolproof but if you want to kind of make it your own you do have a little bit of a hurdle there uh to to, to unweave what is already uh built which all of these kind of have that same aspect to it because someone built this you know for them for themselves majority of the time and then they want to share it with others so they're not building it for the the mass um uh, community they're kind of building it the way they want it and then sharing with others so do do keep that in mind when you're installing one of these pre-configured um hyperlin uh dot files they're they're not for you <laughs> specifically so yeah so that's that's high de very good um and it works on pretty much any arch based distro uh which is great and and it works on nick Nix os as well so definitely a good contender there uh and then i want to jump to uh my linux for works dot files uh this one i think is probably the most beginner friendly he does a really good job at making a lot of the changes like quick changes you can make on your um on your dot files with a gui option so he has like different um, settings apps and things that he's created so you can change like border size and you know your gaps in between your your opacity um a, a bunch of different things you can change just from a gui app and not having to jump into the configuration which which is great it, and he does have actually a, a, a starter one as well but i don't know if he maintains that one as much um because it, it honestly seems a little bit more buggy than his main one but yeah i mean even the main one is still um, pretty beginner beginner friendly and it, and it makes it really easy and it, and it is still clean um, and aesthetically pleasing um, as well which I mean pretty much all these hyperlin uh, configurations are so you don't really have to worry about that but he does have like his own like look panel over here that you can you know set your 
your themes and your wallpaper and the wave bar and change the theme for all those things. It's really nice and it, it does come pre-installed with this dock at the bottom. I do normally have that dock on pretty much all my Hyperland configurations, whether it came with it or not. Uh, but it does, you know, come with that one already, you know, configured and, and ready to go. And you can turn it on and off with a toggle, um, which is really cool. So having those toggles and it also has like an actual settings app, which I don't think it shows in here itself. But yeah, the settings app, you can change a lot of your configurations and save them and add different variables and things like that. So I think this one is definitely a, a step up. Uh, especially for beginners than the high DE one uh, because it has a little bit more hand holding uh, available. Um, they even have like a little uh, pop up that you can use to show all your key bindings, uh, which is really nice. So uh, this one is definitely uh, coming a, a long way and uh, he's consistently updating it. You can watch his YouTube videos and everything and, and they're, they're very, um, uh, very good and he's very articulate on you know explaining all of the different changes and everything so this is definitely a really good one to try out if you haven't already and the installation process is pretty straightforward you can use the the bash script here or you can actually just install it from uh the aur and then you literally just uh, use yay or peru um install the ml uh, 4w hyperland and then run this command right here where it says ml uh, 4w Hyperland setup, and then it goes, it you know, runs you through all the scripts and stuff as well. And this one is actually available on Fedora as well. Um, I actually had this on uh, Fedora when I was using Fedora for a little while there. So this is nice to have. It's outside of the, the Arch um, ecosystem. You can actually you know build it on Fedora too, uh, which is really nice. So this one is it's just really good aesthetically. Like everything is themed. Everything is like already completed for you. It has like a calendar app. Has um, the settings app. So I, I definitely would say this is a, a good pick. I guess the, the downsides to it would be the configuration itself is, is laid out pretty well, but because he has all these different settings and things like that, if you want to kind of make it your own, it's a little bit harder to, to do so and to be to add you know to it. And luckily, when you do do updates and things, it does keep your changes every update. So anything you made, and he has like certain configuration folders that you are, are for custom things and then you don't mess with like the original ones but you know we, we all mess with the, the original ones so i don't think uh, people take that into consideration that, that we're just going to change what we want to change um and not always use the custom ones but if you want to use the custom ones it is it is probably the better way to go when it comes to like updates and stuff because you may change quite a bit and then it kind of messes up your entire flow and you gotta kind of restart what you're doing there so and it it's kind of just a lot <laughs> um, it's not minimal in my eyes. It does have a lot of things, you know, out of the box and, and it, it, in all the different settings and different ways it's configured. Um, it has all of these like toggles and things, which a lot of these things you can turn off, which is fine. You know, it has the chat GPT thing in there um, and has, you know, your, your file and folders and stuff. And then a bunch of, you know, other things over here to see, see your uh, performance of your computer and stuff like that, which is all handy stuff. But if you're looking for something a little bit more minimal, this one is probably not the way to go. Um, it has a lot of different things. You'd have to go in and kind of configure it for yourself and, and turn off the things that you don't want, um, which makes it you know fairly easy to do so with the settings apps and stuff like that. So this one's definitely a good pick. And I want to go to my favorite one, which is the one I'm using currently right now, which I tried this one a really long time ago. And there was something about it that I, I just didn't, um, it just didn't click with me. And it maybe was just because I wasn't as you know, fluent and good with dealing with Hyperland. Those are in my early stages of me using it. So it's definitely, it, it itself has come a long way and I've come a long way. So maybe that's the reason why I like it now. But this one here is uh, not minimal um, by me any means, but um, it is minimal in the sense that it doesn't have a bunch of, you know, extra apps and stuff that are, you know, are pre-installed to, to get the configuration that it has. But it is a little bit different uh, when it comes to, like, for for instance, using AGS instead of, like, the Waybar at the top here. So that is a uh, quite a bit of learning curve for me to be able to configure this, uh, the bar at the top. Like, for instance, it does have, like, these rounded corners and stuff. And so I had to ask, uh, you know, someone in my Discord community that is always helping me. <laughs> so shout out to him. But being able to um, change this bar at the top, you know, took a little more work uh, to get there. But it does have, like, a sidebar over here that you can access. Uh, so like show all of like your notifications over here and then has like your audio controls. I did do a video on this already, so I'm not going to jump into this, um, you know, fully, but it has like a, a control panel, if you will, over here. 
uh, which is really nice. It makes it simple to be able to jump in and, and make your, your changes and everything. And it's really clean. I like the way it, you know, it slides out and um, has that panel over there. Um, it does have the, the other panel over here for your AI tool. Um, you can use Gemini or you use ChatGPT or upload your own, whatever you want to use. So, you know, this is a really nice feature because, you know, sometimes I want to do like a quick search or understand something or whatever the case might be. It's literally, I have a key binding for it as well. So you can literally just, you know, open and close it very easily. And it just goes over top of what you're doing and you can search something and come right back to it. So it's really nice and does have like a tools section as well where you can you know, like do conversions and color picker and stuff like that. So definitely a good look. Um, I definitely like the aesthetics of this one. It's really, you know, pleasing and I like the way it's everything is set up. And then the actual configure, configuration itself is actually pretty simple. The main hyperlink configuration is just sourced out to like your, your general key bindings, your rules, and um, everything else that you have. And there actually it's kind of showing it right here, the environment uh, configuration, um, executables, the general, the key bindings, and then your rules. Um, that also has the colors. So everything is, is pretty well uh, laid out in each one of those. And then it also has, um, just like the other ones, um, a custom section for each one of these. So you can add your key bindings and stuff to a separate uh, folder. It won't get affected with like updates and stuff like that. So as far as being the cleanest like hyperlink configuration for one of these pre-configured ones, I think this one has the cleanest one and easiest one to like update. And the, the key bindings are um, really good out of the gate. So I didn't have to change a ton. And, you know, I just had to make some of my own and change some of the key bindings for specific applications that I wanted. Overall, like the the actual, you know, switching between workspaces and everything like that was was already kind of the way I liked it, which was, is very similar to the Heidi E default key binding. So I think that's why I was familiar with it and it just made sense to me. But yeah, so I definitely think the N4 uh, dot files are, are are good as well. So I mean, all these are, are really good. It really just comes down to preference. I would say, you know, Heidi E might be the most aesthetically pleasing one as far as all the different themes and stuff that you can choose from. It does have the most themes for sure that you can kind of swap out and choose from. And they're, they're always updating those. So if you're looking for, you know, pre-configured themes and the more aesthetically pleasing one, I would probably go with the Heidi E. If you're looking for like a more full desktop experience, um, if you're coming from like KDE or GNOME, I'd, I'd say the My Linux for Work dot files are probably the, the better option for you. And then if you're looking for something kind of in between, honestly, it's aesthetically pleasing, but has, you know, some of the attributes that uh, the My Linux for Work has with, you know, being able to configure a few of the things, you know, from a GUI. Yeah, I would try the the N4 dot files. And especially if you like these like sidebars and stuff that um, they have on here, I would definitely give this one one a go as well. Uh, but yeah, if you are liking uh, the content I have been putting out, um, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.